Now, to continue with the book review series that we started actually last fall, <clears throat> excuse me, we, we, we looked at it and we, we thought, wow, there just aren't enough um, books out there that are being recommended for beginners that cover the religious context side from the point of view of history of the different traditions of uh, philosophies, religions, Buddhism, Bun, um, that uh, Himalayan art is primarily uh, about and included under. So I've looked at a number of different books uh, that represent the uh, an overview of the Nyingma, and, it, and I, I actually find it really quite difficult. Now, we already talked about one book, which was The Small Golden Key by Tinley Norbu Rinpoche, and I really quite like that one as an introductory text, although it's very short. Uh, I think he gave me a copy of it back in 1980 or 81. Uh, it was the first time I looked at it. Um, but but today we want to look at a, a, another book that's really quite large, um, expansive in, in size, The Nyingma School of Tibetan Buddhism, Its Fundamentals and History. And this is written by Dujum Rinpoche, um, passed away in the 90s. Um, and the book was published in 1991. It was translated by Gurme Dorje and Matthew Capstein and published by Wisdom Publications out of... Um, out of, out of uh, Somerville, um, uh, suburb of Boston, Massachusetts. Now, this is a two-volume publication, and it's very large, it's very dense, and it is primarily coming from a faith-based point of view. Now, now there's a number of... Um, there's a number of components to the book. There, there's uh, initial Buddhism, then there's uh, the Buddhism of, of the Nyingma tradition and how it's structured under different categories, Maha Anu, Ati, and different uh, teachers and different traditions early on. So we're, we're looking at uh, we're looking at 8th century to the, uh, to the uh, uh, 10th century. 11th century. Then we have a, a, a large section on, on who the early teachers were, and then we move into uh, the later teachers. Now, it is a particularly dense two volumes because the Nyingma school is very complex because it, because it is non-hierarchical. It does not have one central location. It does not have one hierarchy. It does not have one leader and one administrative body. It doesn't have one uh, uh, organized structure that determines uh, dogma and authenticity. So it, it's like many, many, many streams coming down from 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 a mountain. It, it's a uh, it's very <clears throat> complex. It's very overlapping, and then some traditions can be ex just totally independent from each other. So the book is is a little difficult. Uh, but it gives you a really good sense of how, uh, within the Nyingma school, how they look at their own history. And that's the most important thing here, is how are they looking at their history. Now, later on, we're going to be looking at a set of books called uh, The Crystal Mirror. Um, I can't remember how many there are, 14, 15, 16. And they were done by Tartang Tulku out of, uh, out of California, out of Berkeley, California. And there's a tremendous amount of history in those publications. So we'll deal with those later. There's just quite a few of the books. They deal with a range of subjects, but history is definitely one that's covered there. So we'll leave it, we'll leave it for now. Uh, you can press like, you can subscribe, you can join Har on Patreon, and you can also make a donation on the homepage of Himalayan Art Resources.